Hello, this is Conquering History Games, and welcome to another introductory guide for one of the nations of the Kaiserreich mod in Hearts of Iron 4. Thank you for joining me. Uh, the voting on Patreon is still not done. We are actually in a three-way tie right now as to who will be the country, or which country, I should say, I will do next. So until that tie is broken, I thought I'd work on this, particularly since I had the help of one of my subscribers. Thank you very much to Cypher who uh, aided me in the process of researching this country and its different event trees. Uh, so today for the Pin Princely Federation, I'm also going to be doing things a little bit differently than I have in other guides before, but uh, because this video is probably going to be a little bit longer, there will be timestamps provided in the video uh, within 24 hours of me uploading this. So let's get started. Welcome to the Princely Federation. Just to give a little bit of a historical context. The Princely Federation was formed when the British Empire was falling apart and a civil war erupted in India, eventually resulting in it being split into three parts. The Dominion of India is still ruled by the British royal family, so you see George V right there as uh, their Maharaj in a way, although, well that the whole thing with the Maharaj is a subject for another day. You also have the commune, which is the syndicalist portion of India here in the northeast. And then in the south, this is the princely federation run by a council of princes led by Osman Ali Khan, who was one of the richest men in the history of the world. Look him up. It's pretty crazy. He was basically, he was basically smog, but in human form. So the thing I want to do a little bit different on today's guide is not jumping too quickly into the national focuses, although I am going to do that. As you can see, it's, a, it's fairly extensive. Uh, but instead, I want to go through the interface and talk about all the details because I'm sure there's many people who watch these guides who they're doing it when they're away from their PC and they're deciding what they want to do when they do get back to it. And so you could look at these guides and decide, oh, when I get home, I'm going to play as the Princely Federation. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to just generally move in a left to right direction. First, let's look at research slots. You get three, so that's nice. Could have been worse. You could have been in one of those countries that only starts with two. Uh, but you have your three research slots, and you're probably going to pick your standard three uh, researches at uh, at the start, get construction, get production, and such. But the, it's actually kind of important to take construction one relatively quickly. I'll explain why a little bit later. Uh, as far as diplomacy goes, you do have a puppet at the start of the game. It's Madras here. They are, um, and basically this is another state within India, but they effectively serve you and just consider them a part of your country. However, they can break away uh, through events later and you also can absorb them through events. But again, I'll go into the detail of that later. Trade, what kind of resources do you have? It's You're in an interesting mode. You have a good amount of chromium, you have some rubber, and you have so much tungsten. So if uh, you're somebody who likes artillery, perhaps, this might be the country for you. However, you make absolutely no steel, no aluminum, and no oil. And that lack of steel in particular can be very harmful. And you're going to have to find yourself trading for it. Although I do want to point out, Madras has steel. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Uh, now... Continuing to move on. Construction, you got 14 factories. Eight of them are already being used by your consumer goods, so you're not exactly an industrial powerhouse. As far as production is concerned, you've got six military factories and no naval dockyards. And uh, speaking of, uh, you have no navy and no air force. You are definitely the most technologically behind of the, uh, the three uh, Indian nations. You, you could argue the commune is a little bit backwards, but it seems to get off on it, off its feet faster than the princely federation. And I'll go into the national spirits about that later. You have a few different uh, templates here already at your disposal, including two types of cavalry, although that has an E in there and a rather annoying faction. Uh, you also have your police divisions and your garrison divisions. Don't mix them up. Uh, in case you're somebody who wants to do some garrisoning of certain cities of the coastline, you already have those weaker divisions ready to be created. And logistically, by the time the game starts, you are already behind on infantry equipment. 
Uh, speaking of, let's take a look at your army. Uh, this is the only branch of the military that you have available to you. You've got 24 divisions. It's a mixture of militias, cavalry, and infantry, but unfortunately they are all quite green. Well, not all of them, but several of them are very green. If you want, you can convert them all to a single division if you want, but just keep in mind, just about no matter what you do, if you, you're going to be starting uh, with one foot behind when it comes to creating an effective army. Oh, also, you have a little Goya here, or Goya, Goa here, owned by Portugal. It, they're not going to attack you or anything. You could just leave them alone, pretend they're not there. There, You do get a uh, vent through a focus much, much later where you could take that back, just like all the other Indian uh, states do. Okay, civilian factories, we already went over. We already went military equipment and stuff. I'm going to get to the national focuses in a moment, but I do want to go over a couple more things. Up here, you might notice you already have almost a million manpower available, and you're at volunteer only. Surprise, surprise, India has an enormous population. Uh, this is particularly evident if you look at some of these provinces. For example, Hyderabad has almost 10 million people. Bombay, in particular, has 17 million. And uh, as you can see, they they all are they all are pretty big over here. Andhra has got 15 million. Uh, and this is this is important to keep in mind later because these are each of these states is effectively a prince who uh, it, think of it as an, its own small country, but they have all come together to form the federation. Osman Ali Khan owns Hyderabad, so that's why it's the capital. Here, let's just go ahead and take these forces and move them over to one of the borders. Now, taking a look at your commanders, Ali Khan is actually your field marshal, field marshal, and he has the logistics wizard trait, which is pretty cool. It's not it's not very common. And you also have defensive doctrine with him. So you don't have the offensive doctrine, but you also don't have that old guard trait that is sometimes so harmful to your field marshals. You also have quite a few generals, but they may not all stick around again. This is something that I'll go into detail later when we start looking at some of the events. We're not going to go over every single Princely Federation event, but we're going to go over some of them. And uh, it's something to think about when you decide what you're going to do in your focus tree. Before we get to the focus tree, you want to look at your national spirits. It's a good habit to get into whenever you try a new country. You have the decentralized rule, which is giving you a negative political power cost, less national unity, but you get a higher division recovery rate. So if that's something that's really important to you, more important to you than political power, maybe it's something you want to hold on to. You also have the backwards economy, which is what is just crippling your industrial might. Uh, you're an authoritarian democratic nation. This can be changed, but that's what you start as, uh, with not really any other challengers except for paternal autocrats in a distant second. But you're not going to become the minority party anytime soon, except through events. Uh, interestingly enough, as your ministers, you have the Council of Princes as your head of government, because that is how things are run in the princely federation. And you have various other people here. Uh, they're all authoritarian Democrats as your other ministers. Also, I'm not going to go into all of them, but it is also a good habit to check your uh, manufacturers when you start thinking about what kind of army you want to make, for example, or how you're going to direct your economy. For example, here you have the industrial company. You don't have anybody in electronics. You don't have anybody in synthetic resources like you would in more advanced countries. So these are important things to keep in mind. Uh, you also just have your uh, basically standard, not quite as expansive as other countries, but more or less standard uh, military high command and such. So I think without any further ado, we can just go ahead and hop into the national focus tree and start taking a look at it. Over here, you have the India United section of your focus tree. This comes later in the game after you have destroyed the other two Indian states. They are all basically the same, no matter which of the Indian countries that you play as. Uh, although it's a little bit shorter here for the Princely Federation, you just get different bonuses and this is also where your fifth research slot is hiding. Over here is stuff that has to do with coring. Um, the other nations. Uh, those of you who were uh, here, who were subscribers when I was going through my Totalist India run, you know that I am not a fan 
of these focus trees. And I'll just say right now, if the time comes that you play this game and you're playing as any of the Indian countries, and I would just say skip these uh, focuses. Just, they take way too long. There's something wrong with them, or it's whether it's something wrong or it's something done intentionally, they take far too long. It's absolutely not worth it. It just costs you political power. So I would not recommend taking any of these. But let's go to towards the more immediate stuff. Now you have a political branch of your focus tree over here, uh, which is going to determine what kind of government that you have, and then eventually who you will align yourself with. Although this cannot be done until you have completed India United. So it's going to take a long time before you do this bottom part of the political focus tree. You have your science stuff and it ends here in the new economy, which is where you replace your national spirit backwards economy. But keep in mind, you have to do all these industrial ones too, uh, before you get rid of your backwards economy so this is this is a heavy time commitment because you've got 5 10 14 uh, 15 16 17 focuses you have to do this way to get rid of your backwards economy and if you want to get rid of your decentralized rule which is costing you political power you have to uh, head down here so depending on whether you agree to the proposed reforms or not this is going to take you five focuses so these are things to keep in mind you also have your air force tree so that you can begin to create an army same thing with your navy your army reforms are over here with the exclusive decision regarding uh if you're going to go princely command or a centralized command uh, a couple of focuses that allow you to create land forts if you want to get on the defensive against your other indian nations and then over here, the other tree that is in common with all three of the Indian nations, the preparing for the final struggle. So let's go into a little bit more detail left to right. First, talking about Osman addressing the council. You cannot take this until you're halfway through the year. So effectively, you can do two focuses before you address the council if you wanted to do it as quickly as possible. So if you did two focuses and then waited a couple days, a few days, then you could take that. So uh, just for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to take, uh, you can't take preparing for the final struggle, by the way. This takes one year, which is the case for all three of the Indian nations. So you're going to you're gonna wait a little while. You have some time before any war breaks out. All three countries are going to be building up in preparation for that. So just for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to institute some army reforms. Uh, and I will do a cut now, and we're going to come back halfway through the year and start working on the political tree. And here we are after I have already completed two focuses, and Osman has now addressed the council. You now begin can, can fuck five, four, three, two, one, mark. And here we are. It's August of 1936. I've completed the Osman addressing the council focus, and now we can decide on if we want to refuse the pro proposed reforms or agree to the proposed reforms. But before I get into the political tree, which uh, is going to take up most of the rest of this video, I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail on the rest of the focus tree and highlight a couple particularly interesting focuses. Now down here, even though you have the you know little vial in these two uh, focuses. This is actually not where your extra research slot comes in. You actually don't get it until down here where you expand your research capability. So that means you'll have to have worked on your industry some as well as your uh, regular science uh, research capacity here. And then of course you get rid of the backwards economy way down here. Which you don't necessarily have to do. You could try to conquer India without doing that. Uh, it does seem to take quite a while to get down there, so that's up to you. Over here in your focus tree, most of this stuff is just pretty generic, but the ending here, ruling of the Federation Sky, gives you a minus 10% production cost on effectively every plane. So that's something to keep in mind if you enjoy uh, air warfare. And then over here, uh, when it comes to the Army of the Princely States, it's essentially, do you want to focus on infantry style equipment or do you want to focus on uh, going mechanized over here? Uh, that's what the main difference is between the two. However, you could take either, no matter which of these branches you go down, you can complete army reforms as long as you have 300,000 manpower or more in the field. 
This is uh, not the only national focus that is locked behind this gate. Uh, when you prepare for the final struggle and you begin to get ready for uh, fighting against the other states, you also need at least 300,000 men in the field to actually go to war. You also have this option where you could try to create a pact with the North where you and the Brits, or the puppets of the Brits, I suppose I should say, can try to destroy the commune together. I personally don't recommend it. I think the fun of India is uh, that you are in this sort of a weird Mexican standoff and working your way out of it all on your own. But moving back here to the political focus tree, you effectively have four paths that you could go down, ending in declaring the Kaiser I Hind, being the father of the Federation, holding free elections, or uniting the princes. All of these have different consequences, so let's find out what those consequences are, starting with refusing the proposed reforms. After you complete the focus refusing the proposed reforms, you'll get these pop-ups here in which you no longer have a decentralized rule. However, you do have... Oh wait, let me click that. You do have the Rebellious Princes, which is even worse because you have an even lower national unity, even more of a daily political power cost, and you do not even have the division recovery rate that you did before. So they're beginning to talk about an open rebellion. So let's keep going down this path and uh, now dissolve the council. This is going to get rid of the authoritarian democracy as uh, your form of government, and you will instead become paternal autocrats because you've dissolved the legislative body. Uh, that uh, runs things so you uh, are just gonna effectively be a monarch the council of princes has been dissolved so they it, it basically says here that the princes are going south they're gonna create a rebellion you're gonna lose more political power and uh, you still have the rebellious princes so uh, let's keep going and attempt to appoint the national Duan just to see what happens it's been less than a month since the Council of Princes was dissolved, and then you have the betrayal of Krishna Raha Wadayir IV. And it's treason then, which, uh, you know, that's, that's cute. So this is going to have several negative impacts on your playthrough. Uh, of course, you're going to lose the popularity of your paternal autocrats, but you're also going to lose several generals. Uh, most notably, you're going to lose Terapur and uh, Janyato Nath uh, Cha. Chadahuri, sorry, any Indian viewers. Uh, so if you're somebody who's been wanting to do tanks, which I can understand, you do have a fair amount of chromium, maybe you want to do tanks as the Princely Federation, or maybe you want to do them later in your playthrough, you're going to lose them. So if you're somebody who wants to do that, you probably don't want to go down this tree. But yeah, so you get the, it's trees, and then they immediately declare war. You don't lose any of your soldiers. However, it's not quite over yet. Let's fast forward. Uh, you also are going to stop researching this national focus because you have to be at peace to do it you need to be at peace for a couple of your focuses so just again just just for demonstrative purposes we're just going to grab something else but what else is going to happen then you have the coastal revolt and you have another nation that's going to spring up and a little more time passes and the dravidians are also going to go to war so uh, basically they merge with Madras here. Uh, well, the name of this nation seems to sometimes change. Sometimes it still is called Madras. I think it just has to do with uh, what political party is running it. Uh, but as you see, everybody goes up in arms, and now you have to deal with these princes to your south. But hey, at least it's not uh, you know late in uh, uh, 1937 where uh, the commune and the Dominion of India can go to war with you, right? So you've got time. You've got at least six months, if not more, to deal with this, right? Well, maybe not. Let's see what happens next. A little bit after your civil war begins in the south, you're going to get this event pop up where the Dominion is going to attempt to move into Bombay. If you fight them over it, you'll get some political power, but they will also declare war on you. So you're going to have the Indian War beginning in early 1937. And again, this it doesn't matter if uh, it's not after... I mean, it is after 1937, but, but typically you're, you're going to have more time than this because it has to be the 1st of January 1937 before they can even begin to take the first focus that allows them to go to war. And this is true for all three of the Indian nations. And then there's two more they have to do after that. 
So this will be sprung upon you with no warning. So if you let them have it, you're going to lose Bombay, which, uh, as we saw before, was a pretty significant chunk of uh, the population of the Princely Federation. But the Dominion is not the only ones who are going to do this. You are also going to get an event where the Commune is trying to take one of your states because you're being distracted by this civil war. Again, you could fight them for it and you'll get 100 political power, but the war will begin quite early between you and the Commune. So, if, But if you let them have it... They're going to take Nagpur here, which is not, not quite as important as Bombay, but still, it's a significant chunk of your uh, land. So, as you can see, by going down this path of dissolving the council, you could be in for a really, really bad time. However, maybe, you know, you're a major league gamer, and you can take out these bottom two countries. What's going to happen if you can do that, if you can successfully win the Civil War. Well, let's take a look. After you manage to subjugate the revolting princes, you do get the option to decide if you want them to become puppets. Uh, again, I, I really don't recommend that. So you can just incorporate them completely into your rule. You'll get the cores on their territory, and you're going to lose a little bit of national unity. But I, I still think it's the better decision. It's good to have those factories and things under your direct control. Plus, it looks better. I mean, we all know that the goal of these Paradox games is to have the biggest name possible. So you don't want to have Princely Federation squished up here uh, next to the river. You want it to be covering the whole subcontinent eventually. That's what it's all about. But I'm going to come back when it's time for another political decision. Now it's May of 1937, and we are about to appoint the National D1. I do want to point out, though, that even though the princes have been defeated, the rebellious prince's national spirit is still in effect. This does not go away until you complete this focus. So let's let the focus complete, see what happens. And now you have the D1 of the Princely Federation. So it's effectively who your ministers are going to be. You may have noticed that you do not have any at this time. This is not an incredibly crucial decision. It, it's just effectively replacing your ministers. Uh, and then we're going to go into who is the father of the confederation or declaring the Kaiser. Uh, so I'm going to cut back later. Let's look at the consequences of declaring the Kaiser I Hind. So you've completed the focus declaring the Kaiser I Hind, and you it's actually worth an International Herald Tribune major event announcement. So pretentious, but the coolest thing about this is you are now the Indian Empire. So if you like having certain names, there you go. That's for you, and Osman Ali Khan gets, uh, gets to really show off his regalia here. But most importantly, you no longer have that decentralized rule. You don't have the rebellious princes, none of that. You have completely gotten rid of that national spirit and that is the most important consequence of completing that focus so let's go back in time and try completing father of the federation instead and see what happens you don't get any international herald to broom fuck five four three two one mark when you finish your father of the federation national focus unfortunately you do not get any newspaper headlines however you have again gotten rid of your rebellious princes slash uh, decentralized rule national spirit and instead you get this one the father of the confederation the reason you get this is because conceptually uh, the the difference between becoming Kaiser and becoming father of the confederation is when you become Kaiser you've recreated an empire and Osman Ali Khan is going to you know he is he's the emperor and his family will rule the country for as long as it exists but by becoming the father of the confederation it's more of a benevolent dictatorship but the cool thing here is that you get 5% recruitable population factor and you're going to now start gaining political power, which is very good after all that political power you've been losing uh, fighting the rebellious princes and having that decentralized rule for a couple of years. Now that we've explored the part of the tree that shows what happens when you refuse the proposed reforms of the princes, let's see what happens when you agree to them. Some time has passed, then I've researched these two, uh, both proposed reforms and the Council of Princes, and then you get to the splitting point before getting to a new federation. You can either decide to hold free elections or unite the princes. Holding free elections has more decisions afterwards, so we're going to go with uniting the princes for right now. There are a couple events, though, that are going to happen following uh, your new Council of Princess being completed. Of course, you're going to get political power, but you also have your decentralized rule modified, so the consequences of it 
in every direction or have. So you're going to be spending less of a political power cost, although it is more than usual, and you've also lost some of that division recovery rate. So it's a halfway measure. But you also, at about Christmas time, will get an event where several more divisions are spawned for you. This is because the princes were actually holding back because they didn't really like you very much. And then here they pledge you some new forces. And it's, and it's practically a duplication of the same ones that you begin the game with except that you get some royal guard cavalry here which uh begin at experience level three and I'm, I'm bringing this up because you can actually choose to create some super cavalry here uh where you, they get more attack and defense so this actually here uh this focus gives you stronger cavalry pardon me stronger cavalry than even the mongolians start with so again just something to keep in mind now, let's just go ahead and unite the princes. After you complete the unite the princes focus, you will get to choose who's going to be your new head of government. They each have their pros and cons. Uh, I just would like to point out, though, that your first and third option will increase the popularity of authoritarian gems. So that's going to put you into the 70s, whereas uh, Travancore here, while he does give you more political power gain, He's going to greatly increase the popularity of the social conservatives so that they are virtually on par with the authoritarian Democrats. So because the um, popularity is such an important part of how Kaiserreich works, I would recommend one of these two because, as you can see, after you select them, you're going to have a whopping 74% popularity, which is extremely good. And once you've done that, no princely federation revolt will break out at that time. But... If you want to go in a different direction, you can choose to hold free elections. So let's try that out. Once you've completed the national election focus, you get this big decision here where you can decide which of these five people you want to be the head of your government. And this is my personal favorite of the four branches of the po political tree that you can go down because it seems to fit with the idea that the princely federation is trying to remake India as Indians. And with this election, you get to decide what kind of government it's going to be. So if you went with Krishna Raha here, you're going to get a big boost in your authoritarian Demo uh, democratic popularity, but you could become a social conservative. You could uh, go with this guy who also is an authoritarian Democrat, but you uh, could go with social conservative again, or you can go with being market liberal, uh, which is probably a little bit dangerous because uh, you have a loss in your political power gain and you uh have to take longer to build military uh factories but it's very interesting uh i think because see let's just let some time pass you also get a new you you this also will determine what the name of your uh country is so you have the deccan federation here now you see osman is still going to be running things let's be clear about that but you do get uh different names for your country for example here i went with varma and your country's name becomes Hyderabad, and you are a social conservative country. A quick side note regarding the sale of Ceylon. This is an event that happens while Germany is going through its Black Monday reforms. Uh, if you do accept it, you will receive Ceylon. If not, the German Empire gets to keep it. There's really no reason to not take it. The commune in the Dominion of India will have a lowered opinion of you. However, they're already at minus 200 and then some. It's just that minus 200 is the lowest you can go. So again, no reason to not take it from the Germans. And uh, then you just decide if you want to uh, have them be a puppet or not. Uh, I'm just going to merge them into the nation. Again, uh, it doesn't particularly matter which way you go. It's your own personal preference, but it's not an event that pops up every game. I guess technically there's a 50-50 chance of it happening, but just keep an eye out for it. So I hope all of that was enough, more than enough, I think, to at least give you an introductory knowledge to the Princely Federation, and maybe you want to try playing at it. It definitely has some interesting paths that it could go down. And of course, the idea when you were playing as India would be to unite the subcontinent. Unfortunately, unlike the Dominion of India and the Bharatiya Commune, you have to stand on your own two feet to do this. You are not going to be able to 
align yourself with anybody until after you've already united India. And also something to keep in mind is that the Dominion of India begins as a member of the Entente. So be prepared to fend off naval invasions, which is going to be pretty hard when you don't have a navy. Which brings me to strengths and weaknesses of the Federation. The strengths of it are, of course, your enormous manpower. You have quite a lot of tungsten, and uh, you do have a couple of natural river defenses here. So if you just wanted to build some forts and ha uh, let's play who can stack the bodies higher with the other nations of India, you certainly could do that. But as far as weaknesses go, you are technologically very behind the other two members of the commune, you uh, of India, pardon me. You don't have any steel. Uh, Whereas uh, if you look here, you see the commune has got plenty of steel. The Dominion of India does not have very many resources, but it does have the might of the Entente behind it. So I would say of the three of these, the Princely Federation is it's the most difficult of the three in its own way to play as, particularly if you decide to go down the Indian Empire route because you're going to have to fight off the other members the other princes and you're gonna have to do it while I've lost uh, Bombay and Nagpur here probably unless you're a super ultimate badass and you could uh, take on all of those countries at the same time in which case you don't need me to guide you I'm just here for beginners so I hope that you enjoyed this and we'll have fun playing as the princely federation be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell so you can be notified whenever I upload a new introductory guide like this. Please suggest in the comments other countries you want to see me do guides on. And if you really, really support the work that I do, uh, feel please uh, feel free to donate to me on patreon.com slash conquering history. And I just want to give one more thanks to Cypher, the subscriber who helped me with creating this guide. Uh, I do appreciate that. And uh, you all have a great day.